Hi, William Ho in here for another video. A lot of you asked about what are my favorite YouTube channels. And since I am here to entertain you, I decided to make a video about it. Take something to drink, cause it's going to be a long video. Here we go, my top 10 gaming YouTube channels. Number 10. Mint City Min City is all about mobile game reviews and he is incredibly good at it. In 5 minutes you know all there is to know to decide whether or not you should get the game. He is covering the good stuff, the bad stuff and the monetization of the game, giving a lot of nice gameplay example of what he is talking about. If you're into mobile gaming and you're not subscribed to his channel, you're doing it wrong. The roguelike term was originally coined from the classic game Rogue, which featured the most genre-defining attributes of a roguelike. Procedurally generated levels, dungeon crawling, but that you have to experience yourself with the game. Another great thing about Shattered Pixel Dungeon is that it is $5, you pay that price, and you get everything the game has to offer, and all of the future updates are free. Now the dev has mentioned that... Number 9. Crashed While Loading Crashed While Loading is a gaming and pop culture weekly podcast hosted by Ashen Phoenix, a veteran MMORPG role player. I really enjoy the openings of the podcast where he's doing a CD roleplay thing and just his overall personality is enough to keep me listening to him week after week. Hi, I'm Ashen Phoenix. You might know me from such podcasts as Crashed While Loading and the highly underrated Halflings Aren't People. I'm here today with an exciting new announcement that I'm excited to have and announce. I'm, uh, I'm starting a new Kickstarter campaign for my project, Random People Give Me Money in Exchange for Absolutely Nothing, or Rigiminifin. It rolls off the tongue, I know. Now, what do you get out of this, you might ask? And that's the beauty of this project, really. Uh, absolutely nothing. You get high-grade, mint-quality, nothing. Absolutely nothing. I get everything, and you get nothing. Now, I know what you're thinking. I clicked on the wrong podcast again. Uh, what is this crap? And I can assure you that, yes, you did fat-finger your screen, and you are on the wrong podcast. And for the rest of you, it's probably more along the lines of, but why would I give you money for nothing? And to that, I respond with you, my honesty. My pure, unadulterated honesty. Oh sure, I could have pretended to uh, create some stupid board game, or as a random example that's not going to come up today in the show, an MMO that's not possible to build, uh, it just shows a bunch of store-bought assets that anybody can do to exploit you know, young, stupid kids that have no idea any of that stuff. The naïve. Also, the part where I don't like being sued for lying and have to give everything back is the other reason. But really, it's my honesty that you're paying for. And that's why I know you'll support me. So, thank you. And remember, look it up. Kickstarter, random people getting me money for an exchange for absolutely nothing. And just look it under the, let's see, I think the tagline is, Don't be an idiot on Kickstarter today. And thank you for your support. It means a lot to me. By the way, don't actually do that. Don't, that's a joke commercial. Don't go looking for that. Number 8. Old Man Gaming Old Man Gaming is a duo made of Zack and Neil. There's a lot of gaming stuff on that channel like reviews and such, but my reason to be subscribed is the weekly podcast. They are bringing the gaming news like no one else and they're reading all the comments left on their latest podcast video, which gives a great relationship with the viewers. 
Old Man Gaming Podcast is the best way to get your gaming news. Go look them up. Uh, all right, so jumping over to our YouTube, uh, our YouTube comments. Uh, right off the bat, William Huwin, who's my my spirit animal right now, I think. Uh, he says hi. Yes, Persona games are very deep time sinks. 80 to 100 hours for a single playthrough. Mm -hmm. And ideally, you play it twice to see everything. I love those games anyway. Will, I'm going to take your word for that. I stay away from JRPGs as much as humanly possible. Um, then, I wish uh, I had more time for JRPGs. You know, that's another video. Go check out, because Adam Sessler hates, hates JRPGs. But they, yeah. made, they made him play Persona, and he yeah. has a great video on that. That's a really good video. Uh, I listened to that one. That one was interesting. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, he almost convinced me to try Persona, and then I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he then says, hey, Zach, is my audition to replace Neil still on Tuesday? <laughs> He then says, parentheses, of course, I'm kidding. The show would never be the same without our favorite tiny wizard, a.k.a. Neil. So there you go. Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, however, you might have more substance. <laughs> I am just going to say, yes, Will, your, your, your secret interview is still on Tuesday. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, he then says, Zach, high five. I knew it. We did it. We high fived across time and space. Uh, he then says, gaming in 10 years, I don't know really. I'm no expert, but I feel it's getting easier and easier to make games with the new engines and such. And so I believe that there will be way more indie games than we have now, which is good. He then continues, to be fair, it's already begun. The past few years in gaming were great for indie devs. And I think that that's just going to increase. Time will tell, I guess. Let's just hope it doesn't get too much. It doesn't get much more depressing than it is now. Great show, and thanks for keeping me company. Thank you for listening, Will. We really appreciate it. Uh, we we appreciate the comments and the words. I I completely agree with you. I think one good thing, one absolute positive that we've gotten in the last like you know four or five years is this surge of indie developers kind of and and the fact that the technology is so much more readily at their fingers that they can make bigger cooler games uh that almost even compete with the triple a stuff and we've seen this surge and i think that's only going to keep going that's only going to increase and and i'm really happy about that and i'm not going to lie if some of the triple a guys start to actually fail i think that's only going to spur these these double a guys up higher personally Yes. You, okay. I like, <laughs> you need to talk now. You need to talk now. Well, I don't know. Sometimes it's a. Uh, sometimes it's a. Uh, we talk about a thing and we jump straight to the next comment. Or sometimes there is a. What do you think? I was I waiting try, for I the. Try. What do you think? Oh, okay. I see what you're so saying. So I was like, I, oh, I okay. Paused. This is one I of those. Paused. This is one of those uh, <laughs> that that we are just gonna sit in silence for. There Go back to no my previous comment. <laughs> It's <laughs> chaos. I bring nothing but anarchy with me, and then you try and survive it for an hour and a half. That's how this show works. <laughs> You're not incorrect. Not in incorrect that statement <laughs> at all. At all. It's like it's like Don Quixote. It's like, hey man, just come along for the ride and try not to die. That's that's it. <laughs> um. Number seven, the completionist. The completionist, aka Gerard Khalil, I hope I said it right, doesn't only play video games, he is playing them to 100%. All achievements, all game modes, all secret, everything. No matter how long it takes, he is completing them all. One of his latest video was about Hades, and if I remember right, he had around 300 hours in. And the reason I enjoy this channel so much is not only because of some kind of morbid fascination of watching a guy suffering to get everything in a game, it's the way he's presenting it, it's just so good. Go watch one of his video about a game you like and you won't be disappointed. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. 
Hades is a very special game because at our charity event, IndieLand 2020 last year, we hit the milestone that allowed you all to determine which indie game I would complete for the show. And Hades was that game, and what a game it is. Self-promo so, time. Today, guys, I am pleased to announce that IndieLand 2021 will be happening full force for petting Cerberus. I'll remember how a cork pops every time Dionysus shows up, or how Dusa exits every awkward social interaction by screeching and zooming up into the rafters, a move that I am absolutely going to steal. I'll remember Logan Cunningham's deep rumbling voice as he delivers Hades' epic put-downs. I'll remember the clever twists that Supergiant did with Greek mythology that makes it feel fresh, even though the subject has been well explored in several other games. Even though completing Hades is truly a Herculean task, or as Zagreus might say, Heraclesian task, I came away from it less like Sisyphus in classic myth, and more like Sisyphus in this game. Beaten down, but still positive. A guy who knows that, yeah, he messed up, that's why he's in chains and forced to roll boldly around, but can still offer advice and help out others to avoid the folly of his hubris. I've been thinking for a long time that I've got to come up with a more interesting way to talk about roguelikes like Hades. Is it insane to complete them? Oh, that's a huge yes. Did I have a great time overall completing Hades? Also a huge yes. Did I grimace at grinding hundreds of thousands of darkness for an ultimately meaningless badge? You guessed it, yes. Did I feel like every component leading up to that was a masterclass in game development? Hell yes. Hades is gorgeous in every respect. It's action-packed and heartfelt and epic. Every element of completion felt like I was swooping from the depths of hell to the tops of Olympus. But truthfully, if you want to see the credits roll, maybe do a handful of extra challenges, you can absolutely have that experience without doing every single little thing. If there were maybe one more extra thing at the end of the day, I'd say otherwise, but as it stands, that's how I feel. So, with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Finish It. Finish It! Number 6, The Act Man. The Act Man is a guy that's not shy to have opinions about gaming, and it's great. His opinion videos are my favorite, and this is why I watch the channel. That said, he is also doing some in-depth game reviews, so it's worth to check his channel before buying a game. If he did a review about it, watch it before you buy. You'll thank me and him later. Dark Souls needs an easy mode. No, it doesn't. Get good. Enemy fighters coming at you, Fox. Here they come. These guys just keep coming! Man, there's just no end to these guys! Surprise attack coming from above! Watch out, Fox! They're everywhere! Hold them! They're trying to get through! Move it, Fox! He's right behind you! Fire! Fire! Don't let him through! Never give up! Trust your instincts! Don't ever give up, my son. It's a conversation that tends to pop up anytime From Software is about to release a new title. But it's not exclusive to them. There seems to be a group that's getting louder and louder asking for accessibility and difficulty options. Stuff that allows people of all skill levels to play and enjoy any game. Now, this series of tweets by Tamur Hussein is what sparked my desire to touch on this subject. Touch on it with my Moonlight Greatsword if you get my drift. If From Software added an easy mode, it would rob the player of the experience they are intended to have. It would trivialize the game, the sense of accomplishment, the challenges. But don't take my word for it. Hear it from Miyazaki himself. We don't want to include a difficulty selection because we want to bring everyone to the same level of discussion and the same level of enjoyment. So we want everyone to first face that challenge and to overcome it in some way that suits them as a player. We want everyone to feel that sense of accomplishment. We feel if there's different difficulties that's going to segment and fragment the user base. People will have different experiences based on different difficulty level. 
Why not shilling to a larger audience from software shows that they are committed to their core fans? What I'm trying to get across is video games and indeed all media should not have to sacrifice their identity just so more people can feel like, oh, I can enjoy this thing. And some people are going to label me as a toxic gatekeeper, but okay. I think Dead Space should have a less scary option, where the necromorphs are more cartoony and they talk like Spongebob. Hi, how are you? I think we should discard the whole rating system, it's too discriminatory. Every game should be rated E for everyone, so that we have the most accessibility. And then everyone can enjoy this scary horror game that's no longer scary and doesn't provide the intended experience. If something feels inaccessible to you, then perhaps you should reflect on your own taste and ask, is this really for me? When I played Civilization V, I went to the tutorial, the part one tutorial. After spending 20 minutes in it, I still had no idea what I was doing. I didn't get it. That's okay, this game's not for me, I don't hate it. But I think this topic of making the difficulty easier is actually distracting from the real conversation of making games more accessible. Let's not roadblock people with a paywall or demand they grind exorbitant amounts of time. Developers and companies should spend more time focusing on making the game literally playable for people with disabilities. Again, you don't have to take my word for it, hear it from Donovan Crypt Daddy. The debate on difficulty options for disabled people every time a new popular game is about to come out is distracting from corporations that should be focusing on figuring out different slash cheaper accessible controllers so they can play like everyone else, no matter the settings. Accessibility should be attained through remappable keys. The original Dark Souls port wasn't accessible to PC players because they kept the fucking Xbox 360 button inputs. Um, okay, we're gonna have a lot of trouble. Look, press every button. <laughs> okay, fucking not that button. Okay, what, what press the button? It was Q. You know, things like offering subtitles in different languages, clear tutorials, a colorblind mode, that sort of thing. At the end of the day, I mostly agree that video games should offer a variety of difficulty options and challenges. However, unless you want to make the game more challenging, this is specifically not the case with Souls games. And really, it is up to the developers. If they want to have one set difficulty, one set experience, that's totally fine. But From Software's titles have challenge and difficulty as the cornerstone of their identity. Asking them to throw that away is simply discouraging you from becoming a better player. Number 5. It's a Gundam. It's a Gundam is a YouTuber that covers video game, Twitch, and TikTok nonsense cringe. Papa Gundam is edgy, he is funny, he lost his will to live a long time ago and I recognize myself in that. He's making me laugh like no one else can, and I thank him to help me push through my days. God bless you, Gundam. Now tuned into the motherfucking greatest. Turn the music up in the headphones. You like Huey Lewis on the news? It must be hard being a parent nowadays. It's either a child is on TikTok coming up with new wild and zany genders that make absolutely no sense or their gender changes depending on what beads they're wearing or the time of day or whatever situation they happen to be in. My God, the kids are sexual chameleons. We're screwed. Man, nobody got better licks than me. Only the first semester. But I got this devious look. You stole a dirty ass clock that's probably sat in that school for the past 30 years. You just exposed yourself to some microbes and fungi or something. Ain't nobody. You think the janitor climbing a ladder to clean that? Now let's see what's up. Let's get with these licks, baby. Last look of the day. Till suspended. <laughs> See, that's what you get. You got to tie your shoes tight. I remember when I was a kid, everybody like, why are your shoes so tight? Because motherfuckers try and rob me. Imagine two, two. Why are you sh in school? Be lucky he didn't crawl under and get the other shoe. And frankly, this dude should have did. He should have opened the door, grabbed a nugget of sh and hit him in the face with it. That would have been the move to make. Hey, man, you already know who it is. Hey, 
you already know who it is. It was your boy Lil B. Hey man, it's that hoop life mixtape. This that pretty boy music. If you're on the streets, man, you in the gutter, man. You got what? He stole the subway sign. The subway sign. How did the parents not notice something? That's how you know the parents ain't paying attention either. The parents are also on TikTok doing little dances, showing everybody they got vaccinated. Look at me. I'm vaccinated. Meanwhile, the child going upstairs with an entire subway fucking sign. And put it in the bedroom. There's no way as a parent you missed this. Uh, son, why is there a subway sign here? Because, Dad, I really love the subs. I'm trying oh. to make art, dude. I'm trying to do stuff that will touch someone's heart like 30 years from now. I'm going to be the touch somebody's cock. I'm the Bill Hicks of YouTube. I'm going to fucking die soon. And then YouTubers in the future are going to be like, oh, yeah, it's a Gundam. He used to be like Bill Hicks. It's a shame he died in that gay accident. Number four, Kira TV. Kira TV is a MMORPG focused YouTuber, but he is also covering gaming scams, Kickstarter games, and indie games. His Kickstarter Awesome Games series is probably my favorite, but him exposing some NFTs and crypto scam games are very important for the gaming community. He's doing it in a very personal way and he is uploading almost every day. It's always good news to see Kira posted a new vid. With a headline like this, you know exactly what you're getting into. Investors spent millions on, quote, evolved apes NFTs. Then they got scammed. Uh, who would have guessed that you would be getting scammed here? So this is the developers behind the NFT project. Evil Ape suddenly disappeared along with its Twitter account website and $2.7 million. So what they made was, as you can see here, this image, this is what you were paying for. You were paying for... Uh, an evolved ape apparently and this was apparently going to one day be turned into a video game so that's obviously why i'm covering this uh the evolved ape video game come on youtube you can do it uh this was it nft project evolved apes earn eth rewards win ethereum in this versus fighting game tell me if you've heard this one before stop me if you've heard this story so this is what you were working with is this in the highest quality it's gonna go 360p bro it's 2021 so this is what you were you were buying into the idea of i'm gonna own nfts of these apes and then this was the concept of the game and obviously it tells you you know not in-game footage because the game never existed as is usually the tradition with these kinds people. of projects okay if i'm hungry you will have to prepare delicious food for me all right I think we can give you some delicious food. Are you familiar with uh, sperm? Yes. Right, it's that time again. Is Kira's Kickstarter Adventures. Here we go. We've got Good Boy Galaxy. Uh, I can tell from, from the name already that this is going to be a banger. We're going to be playing as the good boy. Uh, this is funded £137,000 out of 18 of the goal within nine days. And this is coming out on Game Boy Advanced, PC and Switch. You know, all of the all of the popular platforms. I, can, I don't, why has this been funded for so much money? I'm I'm so confused. I mean, it looks cute, but still. Number three, Indie Mouse. Oh, Indie Mouse! I've only found this channel a month or two ago, and I've been binge watching all the content. The Super Resident Evil series is so good it should be illegal. He's having a way of doing a complete playthrough of a game while commenting and explaining stuff that is very unique to him. I can't really explain it, you really have to watch it to understand. Here's a few clips that might help understand what he's doing. Gifts we gave, but more you took, she snarled. So more in turn is due. In a blink, the girl was trapped inside a mirror. My god, Mia! You gave birth to that? That's the world's fattest baby. What is with the creepy story? She's only six months old. I don't old. think we should be reading our daughter this book. Woman at the store said it was traditional. Oh yeah, was she wearing a pig mask, Mia? I'll finish dinner. No, 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 Mia! Don't give me the baby! Oh, she's so heavy. Anyone who says RE8 isn't a horror game, obviously hasn't played this part. 
Please never ask me to hold your baby in real life. I'm not interested. Oh man, I would lay into that bread right now if I wasn't holding my first and only child. Our taste in music's definitely improved over the years. Oh, Ethan! Once you're a big girl, we'll have a drink together, all right? Big girl? What, when she hits six, you're gonna have a glass of wine with her? Oh, baby sleep time can wait. I gotta, I gotta see this. Also, I like how the desktop is just a screenshot from the game. <laughs> well, hi there, little Rose. <laughs> you like that, Rose? That's some of my best material. Hang on, Ethan, let me write that down. I can use that in a video. Well, let's me escape. <sighs> Scott free. <sighs> oh, no! Today I'm <laughs> Oh god, oh god, come on. I need this. I need this. Can I have this back? Yep, I know. I know what it is. I saw it. <laughs> I'm very familiar with it. Where is she? Oh. Later, Lady D. Oh shit! <laughs> Running will get you nowhere! I'm sorry, I have to disagree. Running literally saved my life there. And now I'm getting away. And I'm gonna eventually kill you. Oh, I gotta slot my hand back on like a Lego piece. Perfect. Straight up got a toy castle in here, huh? Devil May Cry. So, how did Devil May Cry 2 go? How did it go? You know exactly how it went. We've beaten Fear 3, Dead Space 3, Resident Evil 6. You know how long it took me to quit the MC2? 14 minutes. It's gotta be a new record. 14 minutes I lasted in that game. Look, just skip to DMC3, okay? Everyone's gonna be thankful. Man, they're really hitting me with a tough decision here. Do I want gold or yellow? What, gold, yellow, what? I don't know, man. <laughs> We're gonna have to pick. I'm really starting to think I should go look up what yellow or gold means, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I went gold. Is that bad? Tell me down below. I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. Okay, so it's the FFA opening. Uh, we have Blue Dante versus Red Dante. And it looks like looks like Blue Dante's won this one. Yeah, oh, your wife's been in a car accident. Well, if you want to use the bathroom, help yourself. The toilet's in the back. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. <laughs> this is... See, this is what they were missing in DMC2, you know? Number 2. Josh Strifehays. I know what you're thinking. Wait, who's the number one then? Because those of you who know me knows that I am a Josh simp. I love his humor and personality. I obviously enjoy MMORPG and gaming content, so it's definitely a win for me. He is very consistent in his schedule, with a weekly episode of Worst MMO Ever, which is all about laughing at what some MMOs are doing wrong. There's also regular video about MMO opinions and mechanics, news and more. What keeps me on the Patreon list is how funny he is. This dude is very funny, trust me. Isekai Demon. Isekai Demon Y... What? Why? Isekai Demon Y. <sighs> Isekai Demon Waifu is so bad, it's almost a parody of the mobile idol game genre. If you paid me to make the worst satire of the worst mobile gaming genre I possibly could if you gave me a year to design a parody game. I would not be able to make something as bad, as sexist, as derogatory, as devoid of gameplay, as Isekai Demon Waifu. If playing Avataraka put me on a list, then I may as well just walk into a police station and say, hey, I played Isekai Demon Waifu, and they'd just nod at me 
understandingly and just lead me to an open cell. No questions need be asked. But the whole point of this series was that I play the games so you don't have to. I used to be an actor. Stage, screen. I was in Shakespeare. I won an award. Look, see? I got an award that said I can act good. Now look at what I do for a job. How do I explain this to my mum? Oh, Josh, what have you been doing this weekend? I've spent all day playing Isekai Demon Waifu. Is that one of your videographic games? It is, Mother. Can I see? No. Number 1. GTB JTB aka JTB123 aka JTB123 aka Joe Button Ninja Gaiden Master doing tutorials for the game and giving tips to players since around 2007. He is the most genuine person on the internet, always giving his take on life in general while playing games like Ninja Gaiden of course, Resident Evil 4 and Doom like a freaking pro. Sometimes I just listen to him, not even looking at the gameplay because for me at least he's that interesting to listen to. I can't imagine my life without listening to JTP talking so yeah. I mean, it is what it is. I tried to find some clips to illustrate what I'm talking about, but his videos are often many hours long, so it's not easy to showcase how it really is. You kinda have to watch him often. But anyway, here's some stuff. We've still got Infer new. More like Infer yes, am I right? Yeah, everyone, yeah. Top tier dad yeah, joke. My, uh, my donuts like failed so hard tonight. I'm kind of emo about it. I'm not gonna lie. It's the first thing I've had, like baking or cooking wise, this year that's like really failed miserably. Um, and I and I can't like, I can't figure out why. Like you know, I followed the recipe like to the fucking letter and everything, and it just. No, just real life was just like, nope, you're not having donuts tonight, bruh. So I thought, okay, I'll play some NG instead. Drown my sorrows with Ryu's moonshine. There we go. So, um, yeah, we did very hard. I say we, I mean me, but you know what I mean. Did very hard last week, um, so now I want to do very hard 100%. I think some of the items actually are different on very hard, so I'm basically just going to go through this kind of on a whim, as I do, and I'll- And you need this on a, on a normal run anyway, so. Um. Oh no, I wrote down my mission time for that, but thank you. I'm in the middle of my own very hard run NGV, spent too much money on Talisman, it's been a little decade since I played. So I don't have the UF or most other upgrades. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's it, it can be rough. I mean, there's plenty of, um, I'm gonna play Neo 2 someday, but again, you know. Me, that's kind of what it was like I, I got pretty tired of troubleshooting shit on pc and i was like you know what just works not gonna be true of everybody raises edge no vicky oops exactly yeah you know and 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 i i feel like the especially the older you get and this is not gonna be true of everybody but for me that's kind of what it was like i i got pretty tired of troubleshooting shit on pc exactly i that wasn't bad, actually, considering that was a wise guy helicopter. Oh, that's the third one. Okay, yeah. Yeah, is that one any good? Because I know the Thief games are a bit, like, 
you know, I hear, like, conflicting things about them. So. I didn't play Razor's Edge, no, Vicky. Oops. Exactly, yeah, you know. And, and, and I, I feel like the, especially, you know. A lot of games just randomly stopped working on uh, on PC. Yeah, I've heard Thief 1 and 2 are the best. Yeah. That is what I've heard. Update your drivers. That's more money than Master Ninja. So. Uh, I swear we should do... I swear I have to play Racer's <laughs> Edge. I should, yeah. Yeah, you now, you, now have to, you now have to pay me money to ask me... Fuck. That was close. I have to play Racer's Edge. <laughs> I should, yeah. Yeah, you now you now have to you now have to pay me money to ask me that question. <laughs> that's uh, that's what I need. Like to, to ask that question, you have to pay five dollars. Nice. Don't forget the life of the gods. Um yeah, you can do that, Dark, but honestly, like, above hard, that's not a good idea. Ten seconds versus a talisman. Um, super broken. And this, and I think as well... Like, I, I have to try some deep dish pizza. Like, you know, I've never been to Chicago, so I've never had it. Or, uh, but I've... <laughs> If we make it through the PS5 generation and, like, there isn't another version of Skyrim, I'll be pretty surprised. Okay, I'm not going to risk this. So. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think they would remake Dead Space 3, to be honest. Like, Dead Space 3 didn't do, like, terribly, but... Stop blocking, you absolute bitch. God damn it. Um, yeah, Dead Space 3 didn't do terrible, but it's definitely kind of the black sheep of the series. Um, can you even say that anymore? Am I going to get banned? But yeah, you know. You know what I mean? It's the ugly duckling of the series, you might say. Um, it's definitely the least thought of, like the least well thought of. Um, so I, I think they would probably just do what, probably just do what Capcom did, you know? Like, they know Dead Space 1 and 2 are, like, basically sure things in terms of a remake, like, as long as they don't fuck them up. So they can do that, and then they can be like, oh, and now we're doing another Dead Space game, because you want it. Nope. Hold this fireball. Um, I'm actually gonna go for this. Oh, man, this run, this run's not great, honestly. I need to get I need to get really good late chapters to really get some time on here. So, uh, yeah, I saw that platinum. Um, Ryu, what are you doing? You pleb. Yeah, to, yeah, it's not bad, but it's not great. I'd, I'd almost say... I don't know, actually. I'd, maybe, like, it's, it's not bad considering, like, it's Ninja Gaiden, but I don't know, man. Like... Like, two, like not even a quarter of a million copies between, like, all platforms and regions. Like, that's... that's it, it, Okay, I'll put it this way. It's not bad, but if people were hoping, like, oh, yeah, this will ignite an NG4, that ain't happening with 240,000 copies. Like, no way. Not when you consider, like, you look at, um, and this is probably not too far off, but they pro they probably looked at, like, you know, the remake, the RE2 remake, re like, the remake remaster, the Vanquish bundle and that. They broke a million units, like, effortlessly, you know? And that, and they were, that was one game. This is three games together, and it didn't break a quarter of a million. Like, that's not good. I, to be honest, Jesden, I, I, I agree uh, okay, 9.13, but a lot of that was me answering the fucking door. Um, yeah, it doesn't really need a remake, no. But, I mean, I, I, I ain't gonna say no to it, you know. It's either a remake or, like, no more new Dead Space. And, you know, I know which I'd take of those two things. I, I'll take a remake over no game. 
So, but yeah, I kind of agree. Like, it doesn't really need a remake. I know where he's. I'll catch you later, man. Um, yeah, apparently there's something Final Fantasy. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's going to be unfortunately jolly. That's going to be on in-game and real time because it wasn't a cutscene, but it, it's no big deal. Um, I'm still very much in the phase of like um, deciding on what the optimal route is right now. So it's um, I'm not going to fret over like 20 seconds. And even with that, I still beat my chapter nine time by quite a bit. So as I said, I'm ahead on this run, but I'm just not. I'm not happy with it. Like I just. I fucked up not doing the zombie challenge. Uh, that Alma was just... Ugh, God, that Alma was terrible. Um, yeah, it's, it's not been great. So. What's up, Dilso? Um, do you wish they put the Future Ninja costume? I do, yeah. It's a shame that's not in here, yeah. So, but yeah, there's other stuff. Like, you know, there's definitely other, like, horror games I would prefer. Like, if, if I could just... If they were like, hey, pick a horror game to remake. Dead Space wouldn't be my first choice. You know? Um, okay, uh, I need the UF still. Um, probably maybe Dino, Dino Crisis 1? Dude, Dino Crisis with like modern fucking shit on it? Like, oh my god. <laughs> you know, it's like, give, give me that. <laughs> the world needs that. That would be amazing. Not a bad worm. For no UF? Yeah, it really is. Dino Crisis would be sick. Um, Code Veronica. I don't care. I will die on that hill. Everyone can be like, Code Veronica is not good. Uh, you people are cavemen, and you just don't know art when you see it. Code Veronica is up there with blood on the sand in like the pinnacle of human artistic achievement. Great Spirit Elixir. No. God, I'm thinking of Sigma, where they just give you like a billion great I knew that. Oh, I should have nymphed. I should have nimpoed there. That floor, like... That floor is why I'm thinking uh, level 3 in Azuma is actually worth getting. Because the only downside to Inferno is if the ogres jump, the fireball doesn't hit them. Whereas in Azuma will still hit them, and you will still kill the imp at the same time. So, you know, it's... Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that. Honorable Mentions Rory Khan for his no BS informative takes on gaming and for getting me to enjoy Dark Souls years ago. Upper Echelon Gamers for his in-depth investigation of gaming scams and other shenanigans. Michael Snow for his video about the good old time of gaming. He is a huge fan of those old school first person dungeon crawlers and I really enjoy listening to him tell the tales of those games. The only downside of his channel is the unregular and scarce uploads. Anyway, that's all for me. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and bye bye. Hey, I did it! I'm a real YouTuber now because I told people to like and subscribe.